Thomas, Thomas is gonna Thomas is gonna speak some more. He's like I said, he just scratched the surface. He's going by. He, he, let me he, let me do this twice. We haven't done this to him yet. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, I did just scratch the surface. I mean, this thing is 2,700 pages long, and, and uh, the, the brief explanations I put together are an hour, an hour and a half. And um, then the questions and answer sessions come. I'll, I'll give you the second. Um, then the question and answer sessions come, and that adds another hour, hour and a half. Um, but I would like to, to, uh, to, to thank what would you like to get about Bowser? I'd like to thank him for what he said. I would like to, however, offer one small correction. That correction is that this country has never faced the danger it faces right now. And I'll tell you why. In 1776, the majority of Americans were patriots and Christians. In 1861, the majority of, of Americans were patriots and Christians. And in 2010, it sure seems like the majority to me are a bunch of lily-livered, and I won't say <laughs> But we've, we've grown to a country that hates God. If we don't correct that in our own hearts, then we don't deserve to live here. And it gets down to really, folks, it gets down to the minority. It gets down to the minority that's willing to repent, that's willing to return to the God that made us, the God that gave us the right, and the God that gives us the liberty. And he'll protect the minority if they'll do that. Amen. So I would like to take just a minute and, and read something from a man by the name of Reverend John Witherspoon. Reverend Witherspoon was a signer of the Declaration of Independence. He came to this country in 1767 to take over the presidency of New Jersey College, later named Princeton. He is responsible for educating the majority of the founding fathers. In April 1776, he's writing on what's going on in the United States on the controversy of independence. It was three months before July. I'd like, to, I'd like you to hear what he has to say. This is a very long one. Let me set this up also. Y'all remember the Stamp Act? Colonists got very upset about the Stamp Act. On the very day that the British Parliament repealed the Stamp Act, they passed another act called the Declaratory Act. The Declaratory Act proclaimed that Parliament could legislate for the, for the colonies over all things whatsoever. And they were thinking that if that the elation of the Stamp Act being repealed would cause the people not to notice that the Declaratory Act was passed. That didn't happen. People of the United States, United Colonies at that time, took notice of that. And that's what uh, Reverend Witherspoon is writing about here. It is the result of that declaratory act. He says, everyone knows that when the claims of the British Parliament were openly made and violently enforced, the most precise and determined resolutions were entered into and published by every colony, every county, and almost every township or smaller district that they would not submit to them. This was clearly expressed in the greatest part of them and ought to be understood as the implied sense of them all. Not only that they would not soon or easily, but that they would never, on any event, submit to them. For my own part, I confess, I would never have signed these resolves at first, nor taken up arms in consequence of them afterwards, if I had not been fully convinced, as I am still, that the acquiescence in this usurped power would be followed by the total and absolute ruin of the colony. 
They would have been no better than tributary states to a kingdom at a great distance from them. They would have been, therefore, as had been the case with all states, in a similar situation from the beginning of the world, the servant of servants from generation to generation. For this reason, I declare it to have been my meaning, and I know it was the meaning of thousands more, that though we earnestly wished for reconciliation with safety to our liberties, yet we did deliberately prefer not only the horrors of a civil war, not only the danger of anarchy and the uncertainty of a new settlement, but even extermination itself to slavery riveted on us and our posterity. The resolution that occurred in every town, in every county, in every smaller district preceded the Declaration of Independence. In other words, every citizen knew and understand, understood the concept that every civil government was ordained. And that when the tyrant violated their rights, that the tyrant was not and did not have divine rights. It was called the divine right of kings. They said, no, the government is ordained, not the particular men. And we can take you out. And they did. And that's the difference between then and now. Because now our people don't know that they have the authority to stand up and say, no, I don't care if you are the, the federal government. You do not have the authority to take my rights from me. This government was established to secure and protect these rights. That's what it's for. And you have the authority because you're created in the image of God and you, are, you have the responsibility to stand up and say no. And we do that peacefully. We still have the ability to do this peacefully. But we are incredibly ignorant. And that is a problem. And that has to be remedied. So, but that can be remedied. So anyway, I wanted to share that with you because I think that's important to realize. You have to duplicate yourself. If just everybody here duplicates yourself twice, you know, that's huge. I don't know how many people here, 50, 60, something like that? 68 or 69. Okay. There was a gentleman here earlier. His name was Scott. Scott Adams. Is he still here? Dean Scott. Dean Scott Adams? He's a precinct committeeman, and he was talking about how he had a list of all the registered voters in his area, and he was calling them all. And I thought, wow! Here's a precinct committee that's calling people, saying, hey, what, what's important to you? What matters to you? He's actually doing the job. You know, that's pretty amazing to see a young man like that involved in that. But we need to see more of that. But you know what? He, he was going through his list. He said, look at this. He said, only 17% of the people in my precinct are registered to vote. No, 11% of the people in my precinct are registered to vote. And on an average, only 17% of those that are registered show up. Now you realize every vote, every one of you, when you cast your vote, you're voting for 8 or 10 people that don't vote, that either aren't registered or don't show up. You know, this case is not hopeless, folks. You double yourself. You become three. You become three. You become three. Take it times ten. That's the factor we're talking about here. You can, you're multiplying yourself geometrically. Each time you do what these guys talked about, you're, you're multiplying yourself geometrically in comparison to the population that does not vote. So this year, we can make a huge impact and a huge difference. In 2012, we can turn this group around. All it takes is a small rudder to turn a huge ship. 
and that's all we have to become is a small 